Hi guys! So, today I want to do something a little bit different. I want to start venturing out into story times because I am a very unlucky person and I have a lot of bad coincidences and um, they're all quite funny stories. So, I thought I'd start sharing them with you guys because they're, they're very funny. They're very funny. To look back on, they're funny. And the time, none of them were funny. When I ask like people's opinions and whether or not I should tell this so the stories, everyone's like, no, but I don't care. <laughs> so I'm still sharing them with them. <laughs> Sorry, mum. It happened New Year's. This happened years ago, years ago. I was with my best friend and a girl. Let's say her name is Beatrice, okay? I had just met Beatrice at that time. We had only just become friends, so I didn't really know much about her i didn't know what she was like on a night out i didn't really know her that well but she came with us for this new year's eve thing at the time my best friend was in uni so she was staying in the hall so she was in a different area so i decided that i would go down to her area and we would go out in her area for new years when it comes to night outs i'm organized everything i'm the one that decides to like where we go, I don't decide, but I'm the one that finds the club and everyone like agrees to it. I'm not like, guys, this is where we're going. But yeah, I'm the one that works on how we're getting there, how we're getting back, how much entrance is, like all of that crap. I, I, that I'm the mastermind. So this was kind of my fault. Okay, I don't know the area that she lives in. Well, she's like, you know, I didn't know that area. So I had to find a club in that area. So I took it to Facebook to find a club and I found one and it looked decent. It had our music genre. The capacity was 600 so I knew it would be quite busy and they had a New Year's Eve event and it was only like 15 minutes away from where Lauren lived. Um, so I was like, yeah, let's do it. So we booked the tickets. Me and Beatrice went down to Lauren's to get ready. Yeah, so we went to the club. Uh, when we got there, there was a massive line. Um, I've never seen a line so big outside a club in my life. So we joined the line, but we were kind of standing there thinking whether or not we were actually going to stay or we were going to go to a different club because we didn't know if we were going to get in for 12 o'clock because it was 11 o'clock already and this line was just so long and it just didn't seem to be moving. So we were discussing about going to a different club, but there was no other clubs that we could see. We didn't know the area that we were in. I've forgotten what it was called now, but we didn't know anywhere. So we were like, we might as well just stay here now. Um, it started raining, great. Um, so we're standing in the rain in this line. Beatrice has got the hump because she doesn't want to be here now. And she's acting like I kidnapped her and made her come even though she asked to come with us and I wasn't really fond of the idea in the first place because I kind of just wanted it to be me. And Lauren, but I'm not a bitch. So I was like, yes, come girl. So to keep time going, this line was a mixed line, okay? There was boys and girls in this line. Let me just point out by saying that, boys and girls. It wasn't just all boys or all girls, it was boys and girls in this line. Um, me and Lauren, when we see a pretty girl, we will always be like, oh my gosh, look at that girl. And she'll be like, oh my gosh, like, oh my gosh. That's what we're like. We, we, um, I know we're a bit pervy. We're a bit pervy. So we're in the line and we were just checking out all the girls. I was like, oh, she's pretty. And she's like, I want her bum. I want her boobs. I was like, I want her hair. I want this. I want that. You know what girls are like. And yeah. Anyway. Beatrice decides to join in the conversation and instead of going in the line that we're going, which is I want that, I want that, I want that, that's nice, she's like, her bum's flat, her boobs are too saggy, her da 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 da, her da 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 da, so I was like, oh, okie dokie, um, party booba, but just ignored it anyway, didn't think nothing of it. Then she started taking pictures when we were in the line in the club. So bearing in mind, she's standing behind us taking pictures and she's like trying to throw up gang signs and taking pictures. She's like, and all this crap, crap yeah. I was just like, okay. <laughs> um, so me and Lauren were just kind of like, all right then. We're still waiting. It got to 12.30, still waiting in the line. Didn't get in. So our countdown was actually spent in the line outside in the rain which was kind of crap but we knew by this point there was it's either we go home or we just wait and get in and have a few drinks and then you know go home so we just waited eventually we got in we got into the club about 1 30. we stepped in there me and lauren looked at each other our faces were filled with dread okay let me tell you why Online, it said that the club capacity was 600. This club capacity was not 600. I reckon it was about 200. Everyone was squashed and there was just so many guys. There were so many guys. You could hardly see any girls. And I was like, I don't understand. There was loads of girls in the line. Where, what, 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 where have they gone? There was just so many guys everywhere. And these just weren't any guys. These were like 
Hood. Hood, guys. I can deal with hood, yeah? There's levels to hood that I can deal with. But this kind of hood was not, like, no. I, uh. So as soon as we stepped in there, me and Lauren looked at each other, we were like, ah, oh, shit, no. Beatrice over here lit up. She had the hump. Now, suddenly in here, she was literally like, you'd think she'd walked into heaven. She was like, I was like, oh my gosh, no. So me and Lauren were like, okay, oh my god, we need to go to the smoking area and discuss what we're going to do because there's just too many guys in here. There's going to be a fight. The, the club was so squash. Guys are pushing up against each other. They're going to fight. They are going to fight. This is what boys plus alcohol plus shoes getting treaded on equals fights. I already knew that. Lauren knew that. We knew what we were getting ourselves into. That's why we wanted to go and discuss what we're going to do in the smoking area. However, Beatrice didn't have a clue because I think, I don't, well, maybe she did have a clue, but I don't know. Beatrice wasn't from our area. Beatrice had a different way of living and a way of thinking. So she wasn't, this was like, I thought that she didn't know what she was getting herself into basically. So I said like, let's go to the smoking area and discuss what we're gonna do. Beatrice didn't wanna come to the smoking area. I'm trying to get her to come to the smoking area. Beatrice wants to stay inside with all the hood boys. So we let Beatrice stay inside with all the hood boys and we went to the smoking area. I said to her, I will lose you because it is so squashed in this club. Even though the room is not big, I will lose you. It's okay, I'll come and find you, it's fine. <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. Usually, I don't leave girls to talk to guys. Like when I'm with my friends, I'm sorry. You guys, if any guys are watching this, you're probably right, you're that, you're the bitch that gets in the way. I am the bitch that gets in the way. Only because my girls don't usually like to be approached by guys on nights out anyway. There's very, very rare that someone I'm with has actually started talking to a guy and exchanged numbers and let him buy a few drinks and all that. Like, usually, we keep to ourselves, girls, like, all go to the toilet, all go to smoking air, all go to the bar, all go everywhere in a pack, yeah? I don't, we don't do all this... You go over there, I'll be like back in a minute. No, 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 no. Not when alcohol is involved. We stick together, yeah? But she didn't want to stick together. So I couldn't be bothered. So I left her. So me and Lauren are in the smoking area. We're literally giving each other a pep talk. We're like, right, what are we going to do? We're like, okay, here are our options. We're in this club. It is extremely hood. Loads of guys. They're all very drunk. They're going to fight. But it is New Year's. <laughs> we already spend the countdown in the line. So we decided what we were going to do. Fights usually break out towards the end of the night, right? When people are leaving the club. That's when everything always kicks off. So we decided we'll stay for an hour, have a drink, and then go. Because we did not wait two hours to get into this club to not even flip in, have a drink or anything. So we decided, okay, we'll just have a drink, then we'll go. We come back inside from the smoking area. We're looking for Beatrice. Where's Beatrice, guys? Where the hell do you think Beatrice is? Beatrice is in the middle of the dance floor, brucking it down. And when I say brucking it down, I do not mean a little hands on the knees and twerk. I mean knees on the floor, hands on the floor, twerking like she's a dog. Because I was, I'm going get her. People were watching her. I was not going to go over her, over there, and claim her as my friend. But I knew that I had to save her. And I didn't know why she was doing this. I didn't think that she was like this at all. So I was like totally shocked and confused. I didn't know what was going on. I did not have a clue that she had this ratchet side of her. Finally, she stops her. She gets up, she sees us, and she comes running over. I was like, no. Nah. So everyone sees her running over to us. I was like, <laughs> Hi! It was so bad. The night continues. Well, no, the night doesn't continue because when she comes running over, I'm like, come, let's go to the bathroom. I wanted to talk to this girl in the bathroom and say, what are you doing? What's going on? What's happened? I don't understand. So we all went to the bathroom. We put Beatrice in the middle of us as we were walking so this girl could not go right. She could not go left. She could only go to the bathroom because she was just wandering off. Every guy that touched her arm, she just went with them that way, that way. It was a freaking nightmare. It was like, I don't even know. It was like chasing around a toddler. Anyway, Anyway, so we're holding hands like this, so this girl is literally trapped in between us. So even if a guy grabs her hand, she has no choice. Most girls, when a guy in a club grab your wrist, you do the, you know. <laughs> she on the other hand goes, ooh, okay. And she'd go off with them. I was like, no, no, come back. So we got her in the bathroom. As soon as we walk into the bathroom door, I'm literally at the door, about to go in the doorway, and something hits my bum quite hard. Not hard to painfully hard, but like something knocked me. But I turned around and looked, and it was a bin. It was a bin. It was a bin. I'm not talking about the bins you have inside the house. I'm talking about the bins that you have out 
outside that you put your rubbish in that the rubbish men come and collect. Don't ask me how it got in the club. Don't ask me how it got to me. I don't know how this bin was in this club or how it hit me. Um, I turned around and saw that there was like a bunch of boys literally scuffling. I was like, okay, get in the toilet quickly. So we got in the toilet, the girls' toilets, and we were in there and we could hear the fighting going on. They were like banging up against the door as they were fighting. I was like, oh great. I was like, till I looked at Laura and Laura looked at me. We were like, yeah, we're gonna go now. Beatrice was like, why are we going now? We've only just got it. No, no, no. She just seemed to be oblivious to what was going on around us. So the fighting like died down. There was no like banging against the door. And I was like to Laura, let's just go. Right? The bathroom door was here. The exit is here. And the rest of the club was there. So all we had to do was go out the door, left out the club so i was like yeah we're good to go like because i don't think you understand how squashed it was in the club there was points where my feet was not on the floor because it was so squashed does, does that make sense my feet were not touching the floor they were like oh so yeah so we go to go out and as we're going out i'm holding hands with lauren and beatrice okay we're leaving the club i was like yeah let's get our coat from the client room go home you know that's that that was a really crap new year's but wait then Gunshots went off. Literally, it was like, pow, pow, pow. Okay, but anyway, they were love you. I can't make the noise of gunshots noises yet. <laughs> but anyway, gunshots went off, yeah. I looked at Laura and I was like, why? We're standing at the doors, yeah, for the exit of the club when these gunshots went off. I was like, hell no. Because you know what that means? Everyone is going to come running doors and we're standing there I was like ah, ah, ah. So, literally you know like that meme you know what meme I'm talking about <laughs> I shouldn't even be laughing because this is a serious situation Beatrice the gunshots went off everyone screamed apart from Beatrice Beatrice was intrigued she was intrigued but I will get into that in a minute she forced her hand free of my hand and disappeared into the crowd of people that was trying to stampede out of those doors me and Lauren Bit up, um, and we saw the cloakroom, and the cloakroom was kind of in a corner. So we went into the cloakroom, but it was still open, so it wasn't any safer being in the cloakroom, if that makes sense. Like, we weren't not going to get shot if there was a bullet flying that way, there was no wall. But there was coats. <laughs> so we hid in the coat. So we, like, they were hanging up on the wall, and we stood against the wall, and then, like, put the coat over us. So we were hiding in this coat. Lauren's here having a freaking panic attack. She's literally like, <laughs> we're gonna die. And I can hear girls crying around me where everyone's being squashed and trying to get through. And me and Lauren were literally just like, this is the corner of the wall. We were here. Everyone's squashing that way. So we were literally like, <laughs> anyway, some, some of the, some boys decided to block off the door to get whoever they were trying to shoot or whatever the hell was going on they blocked the door so now no one can get out so everyone was now squashed in this corridor and me and lauren were like underneath this coat this girl had helped herself to my asthma pam she was literally there like <sighs> and i was like okay you need to stop like <laughs> i need that later and i peered out of my coat to see what's going on and there's a coat there's a cow in this corridor across the room there's people like squashed up against the couch like this and everything but then there's like four people on the couch guess who one of the more people was freaking beatrice do you know what beatrice was doing on the couch where everyone else is getting squashed and boys are fighting. She's, she's doing a two step. She's on the couch, two stepping to the music that's playing in the club quietly that you can hear slightly through the door. She's like this, oblivious to the fact that these boys are like fighting. Like, what? I, I, I just, everyone else was upset. All the girls that were stuck in there were upset. Everyone was, all the girls were crying. This girl was oblivious. I don't understand. I still to this game do not get it. And I was like, oh my God. Okay, I'm responsible for this girl. I bring her here. She doesn't know the area. Maybe she thinks that like she's safe. I don't know. I, I, I just didn't understand what she thought was going on. Like most people would be freaking scared if they were locked in a room with someone who was shooting a gun. But she didn't seem to care and I didn't understand. Um, but anyway, I felt responsible for her. So I was like to Lauren, I need to go and get her. Like, I, would, I didn't even say that. I went, Lauren, look. This girl peered up from the coach. She went, oh, what? And went like that behind the coach. She was like, I'm not doing anything. I'm laying here. I was like, okay. I was like, I'm going to go and get this girl. So everyone was like squashed and I was, I had to step into this squashness and try and squeeze my way through and grab her and try and bring her back and to be honest with you i think i'm a bit of a hero for even being willing to do that seeing as someone was like shooting within this squashness but anyway i got to her on the couch so i'm shouting up to her on the couch i'm like beatrice take my hand come on let's go and she's like no i'm looking for the guy with the gun i was like what why i'm gonna get his number i was like i just turned around I just didn't say anything to Laura. 
Два мусака и че? Два мусака. Два мусака. Два мусака. <laughs> well, I don't even know what happened. I think the police came. I think the police came and opened the door, and then people came flying out. I don't know, but there was like I don't, I don't know. Someone was shot, but um, I don't I don't know. As soon as those doors opened and people started coming out the club, me and Lauren, we were out, out, and then we had to look. Freaking Beatrice, we'd gone off to look for the gun, the the, the, the gunman's number. Beatrice had that had gone off to look for the gunman's number. We see her. She comes skipping towards us. Hi guys. I'm like. Everyone else is like, oh my gosh, just want to go home. That was a horrible night. This girl was here skipping towards us like nothing happened. I was like, I was like, you yeah, yeah, okay? She's like, yeah, I got his number. I got his number. I was like, why did you want his number? And she's like, oh, because I think he's hot. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, and then it's further into the conversation. We worked out that she didn't actually knew, know what the gunman looked like until she found him. Does that make sense? She was only looking for him because he had a gun. Because I, I don't, I don't understand what happened. I literally don't understand what happened. I just don't get it. I don't get it. So yeah, she got his number. We got on the bus home. Let me add, yes, before I say this, the reason we, got, uh, we don't like, I don't usually like to take bus home. I usually get a cab home because I thought it was quite dangerous on the bus. But on New Year's Eve, New Year's, like from 12 o'clock New Year's Eve um, into New Year's Day, the, the bus is all free and like everyone gets on them after they've gone out clubbing for New Year's. Um, so the bus is like, it's like a little mini party on your way home. So we always like to get on the bus. So we get on the bus, we're there talking to people on the bus, Happy New Year, blah, blah, blah. This girl's there with her headphones in listening to trap music doing this. And the bus, I was like, okay, I'm not with her, I don't know her. Um, so, yeah, that was basically the end of it. We got home alive, but that was basically the end of it. And that was actually the last time that um, me and Lauren ever went out with Beatrice again, surprisingly. <laughs> so, thank you for watching. Um, I hope this story was interesting. Um, I have got a few more, but I'm a bit... Some of them are like a bit... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they'll be a bit much. They might be a bit much. But... We'll see, they'll, they'll still, it will still come YouTube anyway because I don't care. I actually don't care, so. Yeah, that was my story. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.